It is your program of choice, Health Affair on AIT, a platform where we focus on public health issues, challenges of women and children with a view to providing lasting solutions. I am your regular anchor, Oshuomowa Daniels. Our focus today is on World Malaria Day and the malaria situation in Nigeria. We'll be right back after the new segment. Please do not go away. The skin is actually very, very important. But the question is, how many Nigerians are actually, you know, um, uh, would I say make the skin their priority, you know? Uh, but yes, in, irrespective of that, there are still other, um, you know, there's still some Nigerians who are actually interested in their skin. So how does it really help? First of all, education. We are out here to educate Nigerians about, um, you know, how they should make their skin a priority. So we're not just in the business of skincare, no. We're here to enhance appearance. We're here to ensure that your confidence is, you know, improved. And um, everyday living should definitely be enhanced by our service. This is medical beauty. It's beyond just uh, cosmetic. No, no, no. It's, it's health care. Health and beauty. That's what distinguishes us. We have state-of-the-heart equipment. I'll keep saying this. And also, in terms of um, qualification, we are FDA approved in terms of our machines. Aside that, the team, they are licensed, qualified, experienced, over a decade of experience. I'm an aesthetic injector, so I'm a doctor who specializes in given treatments using injectables and we're here to convince you um, that you should put your trust in us and we can take care of you and uh, and a number of other clients let's say for example you're suffering from cholesterol high blood pressure diabetes and your blood glucose is, is high so you can come and talk to your nutritionist and she can provide you with a, a special diet that will help you drop those cholesterol levels you can do a workout plan there with our physiotherapist um, you can see your skin and how it's going to age how the exposure to the sunlight is damaging your skin you can get skincare creams to take care of your, your yourself it's it's not just for uh, celebrities, right? It's for about keeping yourself youthful, about maintaining your health, it's about working out. It's, just like, it's like going to the gym, right? So it's not just to enhance your beauty, it's to stay fit and healthy. All our machines are FDA approved, and what that really means is the FDA is a, is a body that gives a licensing to products or to drugs, and what that means is that these drugs are safe. Okay, so it means that it has passed the test for safety. So it means that using these products or these drugs, there will be no long-term side effects. It's not going to cause you cancer down the line. It's not going to burn your skin. It's not going to cause scarring, things like that. We have multiple services. So we've got physiotherapy and EMS. You can see a nutritionist, so someone who specializes in uh, your clinical intake, your nutritional intake, so food and a diet regimen. So he can take care of all your plastic surgery needs. As you said, we saw earlier that we are offering a vaginal rejuvenation therapy. I provide the skincare therapy using injectables, so fat dissolvers, buttock enhancers, buttocks for the forehead, migraine treatments, pain treatments, things like that. Nigeria is about packaging. So if you want to package yourself in the right way, you want to be beautiful and you want to stay beautiful, you want to look your best, you need to, 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 to have a place like ProSkin on your, on your call log so that any time that you, you, want, you, you, want, you, you, question, you have a question for, about your beauty, about your skin, about anything, you pick up the phone and you call ProSkin. That is why that is why we're here. You're talking beauty, you're talking entertainment, you're talking the you're talking packaging, you're talking pro skin. For Nigeria to address the worsening health indices, the masses must play their role through regular health checks. This is the submission of a public health practitioner practicing in the United States, Dr. Falake Kofo Idowu, during a public health outreach in Lagos. The important thing is to try to stay healthy. And trying to stay healthy sometimes means asking questions when you think it's not needed. Most people, you ask them and they say, oh, I feel fine. You, you might feel fine, but your blood pressure is high. You might feel fine, but your blood sugar is high. And a lot of these things are silent killers. So my encouragement to everyone is stay on top of your health, get a primary care doctor, get annual age and risk appropriate screening and less need for medical outreaches like this focused and dedicated to sustainable health care de delivery um, in underserved area and also community development. Also, we try to connect them to follow-up care, which is something that's sorely lacking in our environment. Very good, very good. We need something like this in our community. They do the sugar 
uh, BP. This is the first time that we saw this type of thing in our community, and we are very happy. Dr. Kofo Idowu noted that healthcare in Nigeria at the primary, secondary, and tertiary levels require help urge players to explore the full advantage of telemedicine. We just need to sit down as a people and figure out what works for us and try to implement it. You know, there's a lot of advancements all over the world and we can look at all those um, therapies, all those modalities and see how we can adapt. It's not everything we can copy and paste. I mean, the world has already moved on to AI. We are still trying to even get good internet penetration. But telemedicine is one thing that can help us fast track, literally leapfrog from being in an archaic system to moving to try to be as current as possible. Literally leapfrog from being in an archaic system to moving to try to be as current as possible. Welcome back. April 25th every year is World Malaria Day, a day to focus global attention on malaria as a public health challenge. Beyond the routine celebration, we have a public health advocate and pharmacist to educate us about malaria and the situation in Nigeria. The World Health Organization, in its wisdom, marked April 25th every year as World Malaria Day because malaria is an endemic disease. It's a killer disease that has taken many lives and they're still taking more lives. So to create awareness about it, what is malaria? How can it be prevented? How can it be treated? And how can people live a life without malaria? That concept of celebrating what malaria they're coming to existence. This year we're talking about accelerating the fight against malaria for a more equitable world. It's a very good public health program, and we keep on emphasizing the need for people to live a healthy life. Simply put, malaria is a plasmodia infection. Plasmodia in the sense that there's a vector, which is the mosquito. People are having a kind of assumption that it's mosquito that causes malaria. Mosquito doesn't cause malaria. Malaria, mosquito is a vector that carries the plasmodium. Anopheles, Pasperum, and other species that causes malaria. But when one treats the spread of mosquito, the menace of mosquito, and controls such, the fight against malaria would have been taken into full control. In other words, malaria is a plasmodia infection caused by a female anopheles mosquito that carries the plasmodium, plasmodium virus and all this stuff, about four major plasmodium that carries, that causes malaria. The fight against malaria is a war that needs all hands on the deck. Like I keep on telling people, in any public health issue, or community health challenges, if you are not infected, you will be directly or indirectly affected in one way or the other. Malaria menace comes across, especially in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa. The statistics increases by the day. And funny enough, all the solutions that we need to treat malaria are on papers. If you look at mosquito-treated nets, the mosquito creams, the anti-malaria tablets, creams and syrups, and the injections, they harbor anti-malarias and the preventive measures, the nets, insecticide-treated nets, all those things have been talked about. There have been several wars and intervention against malaria, rollback malaria and all this stuff. But today, can we say that we are far better off than we were 20 years ago? That's the question begging for an answer. Nigeria is a very funny country. When I wrote the book, there was nothing like malaria vaccine. But I looked into such and had a chapter on that book of malaria vaccine. And to the glory of God, there is malaria vaccine today, which means our work, our prophecies, our hypothesis, and our thesis have been taken into consideration. We might not have been to that place, but we definitely get to it. I strongly believe that a coordinated, with a coordinated effort, joint team, the malaria menace can be controlled 
and that dress for better. Looking at the team accelerating the fight is to intensify the fight, to fight the causes. Being a community health issue, a public health issue, if you maintain a healthy lifestyle, because if you look at the stages of mosquito, what breaks about the mosquito, the vector that causes, that carries the malaria parasite. If we don't have stagnant water, there will be nothing like mosquito. If you have a clean environment, there will be nothing like mosquito, or they'll be very minimal. And I want to emphasize at this particular point in time that it's not every mosquito that carries malaria parasites. There are species that carry such. If we can manage such species, either to eradicate them, which will be a kind of distortion to the natural ecosystem, or we have a hybridization. We crossbreed these particular mosquitoes with other ones so that we have a hybrid that will not be able to transmit such. We can do away with malaria. But are we ready for that? The malaria has not been controlled is because of our shy ignorance and negligence. Mosquito is something that comes across. In Nigeria in particular, everyone, virtually everyone, even if your blood group is not the one that can make it to be susceptible to malaria attack and the crisis, at least the mosquitoes are biting you. If you look at the street, I keep on telling you, at any point in time I have opportunity to talk about public health issue on air or in a public gathering, I keep on saying that we live in a world of death. At every nook and cranny, until we have a clean environment, a healthy environment, that we are cleanest conscious in everything we do, from our bedroom to the bedroom, from our lifestyle that we cultivate to the things we do, we will not eradicate malaria. Look at the gutters. Look at the drainage system. When we have stagnant waters, they form breathing space for mosquitoes. These drainage systems are not working. They are being clogged. Deeds are being thrown everywhere. If you look at the roads, it's those beans. It's a society of waste. A city of waste. If you talk, nobody is listening to you. The people that are supposed to manage the waste are not really doing what they ought to do. Those that are in the government system, they may come once in a month if they are coming. But they must definitely bring base to you to pay. Now tell me what will happen to a society, a family, a situation that people have their outdoors west Monday to Sunday without discarding such. The whole place will be smelling. Other rodents, other airborne diseases, other death inflicted diseases will come in. You talk about Lassa fever, you talk about typhoid and all this stuff. All sorts of diseases will come up because of death. You pack those things, the whole way being are filled up. Nobody to come and carry them. You can't kill yourself. What you did, discard it in the nearest place you can. At night, people throw those beans away on the roads. We may pretend as if they are not existing, but they're existing. And if you take a picture of the street, you see them at every nook and cranny. We are what we eat. If our environment is clean, our homes are clean, our offices are clean, our cars are clean, and all this stuff, we live a more healthy life. The environment is clean, and we use the insecticide treated nets the malaria, anti-malaria creams, the anti-malaria, both the tablets, the capsules, the syrups, all the dosage forms, both conventional and traditional or herbal anti-malaria, will be able to have a breakthrough. Health begins with you and I. Whatever your calling, whatever your position or status, try to maintain a healthy lifestyle. If you have a healthy home, you live in a heady room, the rate of contamination will be very minimal. If you are buoyant enough to have nets that you net your doors, the rate of those mosquitoes penetrating will be minimal. If you are able to have mosquito insected treated nets that you can use to cover your bed and your distance, they've done a lot to that extent. Again, despite all those precautionary measures, if you are down and you suspect that you are having malaria, do proper medical checkup. Proper diagnosis constitutes about 60%, if not 70% of medical. We have the rapid test, diagnostic kits. You can go to lab to do the normal malaria test. If really you are done with malaria, there are some anti-malarias you can take. 
Regardless of the harsh economic realities, though most of the drugs today, the costs are throat cotton, that of the rich or the common man, because the inflation is terribly high. If you have a case and you're diagnosed and you have the right drug to use, you must use the right drug at the right time, the right dose, the right frequency, and the right duration. That is rational drug therapy. If you violate any of these rationales, you cannot get good results. Let's assume one is done with malaria and you have to take the anti-malaria drug for three days. Let's start with atemetalimephantrine. You're taking BD, that's two times. You start with first dose and repeat after eight hours. Subsequently, you take every 50 hours for three days. You know that was, you're using, like, looking at 24 tablets, if it's 80, that's 20, 120 or 8480, which you use one morning, one one. If you are to use those medications and the moment you start using them, you get relief. And all of a sudden, you didn't comply with it. You are just feeding those parasites, the malaria parasites. They will develop resistance. It's just like when you are being pushed to the wall. You are running for a dear life and you get to a place and the whole place, you have to find a means of escape. They develop resistance. They will have a case of mutation. Different species will come up, and that's what leads to what? Anti-malaria resistant drug therapy. So when you're supposed to use it the way you're supposed to, and you didn't use it for that period, when next you're done with such malaria, and you decide to use that particular remedy, treatment, or drug, you may not be able to get the exact results. So for people to get the desired result, they have to do rational drug therapy when it comes to issue of malaria treatment. Use the right drug for the right purpose and the right time and the right dose and the right time and you get the right results. The government should come up and do more in the control and the war against malaria. We're intensifying the fight. We have all the remedies. We have conventional drugs, pharmaceutical drugs. We have herbal medicinal products for malaria, and each and every one of them give very good results when they are used the way they're supposed to be used. But as we said, how many people have access to such? I work for USAID funded Breakthrough Action Nigerian Project, and I'm asking you to watch Health Affair because it is an authentic platform for health information. If you are just joining us, it's Health Affair on AI. and next on the program is our nutrition segment. That aspect of the program that focuses on eating right to stay healthy. Vegetable oils can be converted artificially to trans fat, which are usually used for commercial purposes. Fats in general are sources of energy and vitamins, but are harmful to the heart and blood vessels when consumed in excess. Industrially produced trans fat has no nutritional benefit and is more harmful to the heart and blood vessels because it increases the level of bad cholesterol in the blood. It is recommended to eat minimal fat and oil in your diet and to avoid trans fat. Limit your total fat intake by adopting healthy lifestyle such as steaming or boiling instead of frying when cooking. Replacing butter, lard and ghee with vegetable oils such as soya bean, canola, corn, safflower and sunflower oil. Limiting the consumption of baked and fried foods and pre-packaged snacks and foods that contain fat. On our clinical segment, we give you tips for healthy living. Harmful alcohol intake damages important organs in your body such as the heart, liver and pancreas. Hamphal alcohol intake also increases the risk of injuries, violence, and unhealthy sexual behaviors. Common alcoholic beverages include the home-brewed drinks, brukutu, pito, palm wine, oguguru, and alcoholic drinks manufactured in the industry. It is recommended to avoid harmful alcohol consumption. Some current studies are in favor of complete abstinence from alcohol intake. Adopt lifestyles that keep you free from harmful alcohol intake. This is how we draw the curtain on the program today. Thanks for spending your time with us. Let's do it again same time next week. And please do not forget to advertise your health products and services on the program. We do it for you at a subsidized rate. I remain yours truly, Ushua Mowa Daniels. Please keep staying safe.